Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching creatives and crafters how to paint for fun and profit. Welcome, welcome, welcome to 13 Days of Halloween, y'all. Wait, I forgot to put on my costume. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me get on here. Put on my beads. So how is everyone? We are painting the cat in the city. Woohoo. So if you need the tracer and the supply list, oh, my jewelry is in a knot. That's okay. If you need the tracer and the supply list, they are, um, I list, I put the link in there for you guys in the description. Otherwise, if you are ready to paint with me, I am going to get started painting and then, um, we can chit chat while we do that. Okay. What do you guys think? So I have out my 11 by 14 canvas. I have my tracer, and for this case, um, this painting is something that would be traced after you painted the background. So I'm going to show you. I have a tracer, but I had printed out two of them, and I cut this one out. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get something here. <clears throat> I cut this one out, and I'll show you why when we're done. But let's get started painting, and then I'm going to tell you um what the deal is and then here's my tracer it lines up on my 11 by 14 and i would want a little bit of tracing paper here for that so let's just put that aside okay so the first thing i'm going to do is get out some of my cobalt blue i'm going to get some cobalt blue one of the things i like about this is the limited color list a lot of times i do stuff i try to keep my colors limited for you guys but a lot of times you know there's seven eight colors and um i try not to do that so this this is for fun it's 13 days of halloween but i like the fact that it's only these few colors too so i have out some blue and some white when you hop on say hi let me know how you're liking the 13 days of halloween also i think it was fun we have um, almost a week to go. Yes, we do. Um, if you're not painting with me tonight and you're just gonna watch, this video will stay on here so you can paint it some other time when you feel like it, okay? So, I'm gonna get my brush. This is about a one inch flat. It even says one inch. And I'm gonna load it up with my cobalt blue paint. And I'm gonna start up in here and we want it to be a circle. Does it have to be a perfect circle? No, we just want it to be a circle. So I'm filling in my edges here. I'm gonna come around the bottom. If you don't paint the whole bottom, it's fine. You just want the part on the bottom where your buildings are gonna be. You don't have to paint that. So I have this circle going and I'm just going to keep painting it in. Pick up some blue. And I like how part of my um, canvas is showing through. Because I have some white here too that I'm going to be adding. And I just think, you know, white is a color. And it just gives your painting a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to work my way in to this circle. I'm going to pick up a little bit of water on my brush because my paint is not really spreading. And I want my circle to be a little bit more I guess translucent kind of I like the idea of having the blue and the white and I will be picking up a little bit of white paint too in a minute and I'm just gonna go in and paint my circle hey Michelle I am so looking forward to Wednesday too so you guys we have had such wonderful contributors to this 13 days of Halloween. I'm just filling in the circle here a little bit. Now I'm going to get some white. Really, I'm not even, you can hear my brush. 
I added a little bit of white and I am just going around with my blue and my white and working my way out to the outsides of the circle. So we have had Amy from Wix Wax Candles, Angie from ADP Designs, June Bug from Created with Love by June Bug. Um, hello, Barbara. We had, who else? Oh, Teresa Crane from Jeremiah Dreams. Then we had um, Amanda from Simply Feel Amazing Art. And we had Rhonda from Colorful Crochet. And I think it's been quite the variety of projects for you guys. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I put it together for you guys because I love Halloween and I love Halloween art. And I just figured it would be a fun thing, get some of my friends and creators together to join in on the Halloween fun. So tomorrow we have Christy with Christy E Creations Jewelry. Wednesday we have Michelle from Divine Designs. Thursday we have Marion. I should have wrote these down. Thursday we have Marion from um, Creators Corner. And then Friday and Saturday it is yours truly back again to say goodbye and thank you. So, if you've missed any of the presentations, they are on my page and they are on the um, creators page as well. So you can go back in there and find them if you want to rewatch. Okay, so I did this whole blue circle. Hey, Abigail, how are you? I did it with cobalt. I added a little bit of white to get the center of the circle a little bit lighter to help my paint, which I usually don't do. So if you watch me and you're part of my group, Teresa's Spot for Step-by-Step -step Acrylic Art, I don't usually use um, water in my paint, but I needed to this to spread a little bit more quickly and I did it, okay? So now you could take your tracer. You could hit this with a, um, a dryer if you want to. And then you can take your tracer and your tracing paper, your graphite paper, whatever it is, and put this down and trace these onto your canvas. Okay, you can even, and I, I showed you guys this before in the group, you can take the back of your tracer if you don't have graphite paper. You can scribble across the design every which way you can. All the lines, it's a little time consuming. I would just go on Amazon and buy graphite paper, but you could do it. And then when you have your whole design scribbled on the back, you can flip it over and then you would come in here, you would lay it down and you would start to trace. And then the pencil from the back of your paper goes onto your canvas, okay? So that's one way. The other way is to be crazy like me and just go for it. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to get out a little bit of gray paint. If you don't have gray, gray um, you can easily make with black and white. A little, 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 little bit of black in your white. Gray and white make, uh, black and white make gray. And, oh, my black just went all over me again. Yellow and blue make green, right? Those are the one things, if you took art in elementary school or high school or whatever, you always knew those two things. Those are pretty easy to remember. Oh, and white and red make pink. Okay, okay. So let's get that black paint off. And I cleaned out my brush of the blue paint. And I wanna follow this, but not exactly. So I'm gonna fill in my, pick up some gray paint here. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start doing my buildings. Like I said, if you want to hit yours with a dryer, go right ahead. If you feel more comfortable 
hitting yours with a dryer than doing it freehand like this. You can do that. I'm just, I'm looking at the tracer and just drawing in some of these buildings. There we go. And then I'm just gonna come back in. Oh, let's make this one taller because otherwise then we have to fix our blue. See that? I'm not gonna worry about it. Didn't hit enough blue there, so I'm just gonna add a building. It's okay if it looks a little different than the tracer. It's all good. Oh, my thing is rattling. Can you hear that? So if you have any questions, let me know. Abigail, isn't that funny? There is a method to my madness, Abigail. If you um, got the tracer and you have already traced it, that's totally okay. Because you can um, just paint over it and then retrace it. It's fine. That is totally okay. Again, I'm just putting a little bit. My blue didn't come up high enough here, so I'm going back in here with the gray. I also like you guys to do the edge of my paintings. Oh, the rain is really starting to come down out there. I also like to do the edge of my paintings. So like, for example, where my building is here, I'll do it gray, but then if I, when I get back into the blue, I will come up here and I will do that edge blue. And again, over here, I like for this particular painting for it to wrap around. Ordinarily, Abigail, my paintings do all start right fresh with the tracer. This is just not one of them because I like to show you guys different ways to do things. My blue is bleeding a little bit, but it's gonna look like shadow, so I'm not totally gonna worry about that. Okay? Okay. So I'm just going in and I'm filling in my buildings. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black on my brush. I don't wanna overmix it. Just on the corner a little bit there, just a little bit on the corner, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna shade in this side of the building. So we can see where the one building ends and the next building starts. Again, I'm gonna pick up gray, I'm gonna put my corner in black, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try and keep it straight. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this edge of this building. The same thing here. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this edge of this building. And then on this side, I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this edge of this building. And I'm gonna keep working around like that. Again, picking up some gray and filling in now, if you had to mix um, your white and your black to get gray, that's totally okay. But one trick I will tell you is don't over mix it, okay? We want our buildings to have a little bit of texture to them. So if you had to actually mix your colors, that's fine. I would not over mix and have like a total gray color. I would keep it streaky with the white and the black. And again, I'm gonna just come in here and I'm gonna do this edge. 
So I got a message yesterday, you guys. I was so excited. I got a message from one of you. I'm not going to name names because it wasn't on the page. It was to me. So I don't know. People are sometimes shy or whatever. Um, about how much they're enjoying the 13 days of Halloween. I was like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I was so excited. It was nice to just get a message saying, I'm really enjoying 13 days of Halloween. I was like, me too. Thank you. So I'm going to put the heat gun on this a little bit. Okay. So this is what I painted last week. This is a wood cutout from Diverse Woodworking. It's called Design by Line, and it has all, hey there, Angie. It has the entire, um, what do you call it? Design, slightly, slightly, slightly etched into it. So it's already there. It's like a built-in tracer. So this was last Monday. If you missed it, um, you can go back and watch. It is something that if you were so inclined, you could just paint it on. I don't have a tracer because this is a wood cutout from um, Diverse Woodworking. But if you wanted to paint it, you certainly could paint it for your own self, for your own use. So I'm just hitting this a little bit with the dryer and then I'm going to go back in. So like I said, you could have taken this and done the blue circle, hit it with the dryer, and then taken your tracer and traced on the design. The whole entire afraid to freehand at this point in my painting. So Abigail, you have the tracer, right? You can paint the blue or not paint the blue. You can wait and do it later. And then take your tracer and put it over the top and trace in your buildings and your pumpkins, your moon and your cat. Okay? I am actually going to trace in my moon and my cat, but I wanted to get this dry first. I didn't feel the necessary to... Um, trace in my buildings, but I probably could have. But now my, my city's just gonna look a little bit different than the city that you guys have, okay? So I'm gonna get out a little bit more gray paint. I'm gonna fix my buildings up. And we will be moving along. So, that is so much better. I'm not picking up the blue. Okay, so I put a little bit of black paint just on the corner of my brush. And now my buildings are having a little bit more of a textured look to them. I didn't want the blue to keep spreading. So there we go. And I'm just going back in. Now it's important, like you might look at this painting. Oh, sorry. Oops, oops, oops. You might look at this painting and be like, why didn't she just paint the whole entire bottom gray? Because we want to see the difference in our buildings. We want our buildings to be um, painted in separately. You can really tell from the brush strokes where one building ends and where one begins. And so I think it's important instead of just painting the whole thing with one brush, which you could do and then go back and segment your buildings, I find it just as easy to go in and paint the buildings separate. Okay. And this one, I wanna make it a little bit taller here. Okay, my fan seems to be making an awful lot of noise on my computer, so if it's bothering you, I apologize. Okay, so there we have our buildings. I put in a little bit of shadows to them. And this one, and I do that, I, all I'm doing is putting the little corner of my brush in the black paint to get a little bit of shadow so you can see where the buildings overlap, okay? So that's it.
I'm going to clean my brush again. Now, I can take this on here. And like I said, you could do this before too. I don't want to get it in my there. So I can take this on here and I can trace this on here with graphite paper. I could have waited for my blue to dry and trace this whole thing on here. Okay. Or you could do like I did and I printed two and I cut this one out and I'm going to trace around it. Okay. Where's his little tail? His little tail got, oh, his little tail got cut off. That's okay. All right. So there we go. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to hold it down. And I'm just tracing around my cutout. I'm going to trace around my cat. And I'm just using a regular pencil to do this. The hat. And you guys, it does not have to be perfect. If your hat's a little askew, your cat's a little fat, it's okay. I used to have the fattest cat ever, and now she has a thyroid condition. And she's not so fat anymore, and I feel so bad. I still call her fatty, though. Okay? Oh, thank you, Angie. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now look. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Let me pull it up. See? You can see my trace in there of my moon and my cat. So I'm going to get out my one-inch brush again and dry it off. I'm going to come over here to some fresh white. I got a little black in there, so I'm going to skip that part. And I am going to... Start painting in my moon. Okay? I just traced the outside of it. And now I'm going to fill it in with some nice, bright, fresh white. Now, you guys can take this tracer. The link is up in there in the post. And maybe you don't want to do the buildings. Maybe you just want to do this part. Feel free to get a canvas, do a black background, and just do the moon and the cat. Easy peasy. The moon gets a little bit of yellow highlight, which I'll show you. And the cat gets filled in in black. And you'll be like, wow, what a cool picture I just did. So, you know what? You don't have to do the buildings. It's your art. And if you just want to do the cat and the moon, go right ahead. It would almost be like if you did this one and then you did the partial, you'd have like two different paintings. Okay. So. I have the white there. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And now I'm going to get a smaller brush. Now you can use a tiny flat brush like this. Or you can use a liner brush like this. I think I might use the liner brush. Wow, it's really raining out there, you guys. I hope I don't lose Wi-Fi. Okay. Get out some orange, and in this case, it's actually jack-o'-lantern orange, but you could use any kind of orange that you want. And put out a little bit of the orange, okay? And again, if this was dry, you can take this and overlay it and trace out your pumpkins right on there. That's why you have this. It's right on there for you to do whatever you want. I'm going to move this maybe so you can see it while we do this. There you go. Can you see my pumpkins? Okay. So, if you guys have been to the grocery store, everything is traced on my surface is working around over lines. Now, just watching to see additional helpful hints. Okay, Abigail, that's perfect. That is totally fine for you to do it that way. You know what? It's your art, and that your way looks much easier. Well, that's why I'm the teacher here. But you know what? It's yours will work out too, and it is all good. It's all good. Thank you for joining me.
I love that you're here and I'm loving that you're giving it a shot, okay? So I am going to, but again, like I said, if you wanted to hit it with the dryer, paint the blue over your lines, hit it with the dryer and then come back in, that's totally fine. And trace it on there, it's good. So I'm gonna start putting in my pumpkins and we all know, like I started, pumpkins, well, that was not good. There we go. Are all different sizes and shapes, right? Tall, short, fat, skinny, awkward, bumpy, lumpy, you name it, right? And this one I'm gonna put a little bit of a taller one on. So if you're not comfortable freehanding in your pumpkins, I totally understand that. And you can either wait for your blue to dry or dry it with a hair dryer. And then, which I used a hair dryer all the time. I was constantly, well, I don't have that much hair, but I was constantly going between bringing my hair dryer from my bathroom to my art room, then back to my bathroom. So finally there was a sale on um, heat guns on Amazon and I bought a heat gun. I am gonna mix a little bit of white with my orange because orange, yellow, and reds are very translucent. I don't know what it is. I've said this a million times. I don't know if it's something with the dye. It doesn't matter the brand of paint, but orange, red, and yellow will always be translucent. So I picked up a little bit of white and mixed it with my orange. Again, when you paint your pumpkin, you want your strokes to curve. You wanna fill in your pumpkin with your brush and follow the shape of the pumpkin, okay? And I just keep coming back for more paint. So I will work usually from like side to side and work into the middle of my pumpkin. Now I do pumpkins several ways and this is just a quick fun way and part of celebrating 13 days of Halloween here. Okay. So I filled in my pumpkins. I might want them a little brighter so I may go back and add a little bit of the regular orange to them but I'm gonna let these dry and then I'll go back and I'll add a little bit of the dark orange. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my big brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the white. I want it to be really dry. This is almost like a dry brush, so I'm really, really drying off my um, brush. Okay? So... I'm going in and I'm adding these little swishes because this is what's going to be the lights in our building. And I'll show you how we're going to build this up to make it look like buildings. Now this is very abstract, you guys. We're just giving the illusion of these being buildings in a city with some lights on. I turned my brush the other way now, just so I can mix up the size and the shape of the lights up here too. Now, instead of holding it sideways, I'm holding it up and down. And now this way I'll go back. And depending on how much pressure I put, my blobs are bigger or thinner. And up here, I'm gonna do little, little short strokes. Okay, so we wanna mix it up a little bit. So uh, some of them I went like this, some of them I went like this, and then over here I did these little tiny short strokes. Okay. 
And these are not full strokes. They're just little bits of sweeps of the brush. And now we have what is the first step of giving our illusion of these being buildings with the lights on, okay? Using the same brush, I'm gonna get out a little bit of my bright yellow now. If you want the, um, the tracer or the supply list for this, it is in the comments above. Thank you very much. And if you're not in my group, my group is um, Teresa's Spot for Step-by-Step -step Acrylic Art, where I do a painting in here um, once a month. And this is actually, I'm combining in here my monthly painting with 13 Days of Halloween. So if you're here for my free group, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for hopping over to the page to join me. Okay. Let me show you guys what I have so far. There we go. Oop, I got a little bit of, that's okay, the black will cover it. So, we made a sweeping black circle. Then I went in, you could have waited after my black circle. I mean, black circle, brown circle. I made a sweeping brown circle, a little lighter in the middle. Then you could hit it with a dryer, and after you hit it with a dryer, then you can take your tracer and graphite paper and trace it on, okay? Or you can do like me and just use your one inch brush and make a variety of different buildings on the bottom. After I did that, I took this portion of my tracer, because I printed it out twice and I cut this out. It's called Fussy Cut. I, really, I cut it out really close and tight with scissors and I put it on here and I traced it on. Mm -hmm. Then I went in, I painted that moon in white and I painted in my pumpkins orange. And oftentimes I will add a little bit of um, white when I'm painting with yellow and oranges. So um, it's not so translucent. I don't add white when I paint with red. Red is very translucent too. I don't add white when I paint with red because red and white will give you pink. Okay, so I did these little um, brush strokes on here so we can have the illusion of windows. And now I'm going in and right over the first brush strokes, I'm now adding in this bright yellow. I'm going to flip my brush over. So now do we only have the illusion of windows? Now we have the illusion of windows with lights on. It doesn't have to cover up the whole thing. We're just making a little bit of glare with our yellow so we can see that the lights are on. And then these were little tiny ones on this tall, narrow building. Okay. Pick up a little bit more yellow. Oh, flip. There we go. And then I'm going to just clean this brush. I'm going to keep using this brush a little bit. And I'm going to go into my black. And if you have a nice brush, your brush should always look like this. Your brush should not have bed head. Your brush should have a nice chisel edge to it. You want to pick up the paint. You want to put it on one side. You want to put it on the other side. And when you have your brush, you want your brush to have a nice chisel edge like that. You do not want your brush, let me find a cruddy one, to look like this. This has got too much going on. This is bed head. It's got stuff sticking out. I will use a brush like this um, to base coat. Hey, Barbara, it's nice to see you, to base coat on a canvas. But when you're painting in a design and you're doing um, actual art, you want a nice brush with a nice chisel point. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to add in a little black 
to the windows almost like I'm framing them but you don't want to go around there's no reason to go around and put a box around every single window and again I'm doing it with like a little bit up top don't even have to go across the whole thing and then a little bit down the side and here I'm just using the corner of the brush on this one because this one is not as long okay pick up a little bit more black and then again here I'm just gonna go along the tops of these there's really no rhyme or reason to the way I'm doing these except that I'd like to just mix it up. And this is very abstract. We just want to give the illusion of some windows and some lights on in the windows. Okay. So that's what we have going on now. Let me see. When you hop on, tell me hi. Let me know where you're watching from. If you are catching me on the replay, please put hashtag replay in the comments. So I'm going to go back to my smaller brush now, and I'm going to get the bright orange again. And I just want to add a little bit more bright orange into my pumpkins. Because when I added the white, because my orange was so translucent, it kind of gave my pumpkins a little bit more of a softer look than I was looking for for this particular design. So I'm going back over them with the pure orange. Because I want my pumpkins here to be a little bit darker. And again, I'm doing these little tiny curvy strokes. Even for this tall guy, curvy strokes, working my way into the middle. Okay. This one's a little bit awkward out there. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get out a little bit of green. Just a tiny bit. And this is just, this is a folk art. This is just called classic green. And I'm gonna use my regular liner brush here, my smaller brush. And I'm just gonna add in a stem. And then I'm going to put in leaves. And these leaves are easy. They're just a C and a comma stroke. And then you fill it in. There you go. Not anything fancy. A C, a comma stroke. You fill it in. And we have the stem. In the middle and sometimes my leaves overlap the pumpkin sometimes they're up in the air and it's all good okay all righty I'm gonna get my bigger brush again I just want to add a little bit, again, dry brush. You want your brush as dry as possible. You want to just pick up a little bit of the black. And I want to just add in a little bit of black. I have my brush standing up. I'm using the chisel edge. And I'm just adding in some shading, following the curve of my circle. very light touch not full circles and adding in a little bit of black light pressure chisel edge which means i have the brush standing up and i'm just putting in a little black over it very very 
easy, gentle strokes on the chisel edge of my brush. So what do you guys think so far? Let me put this up, see if I missed any. If I miss your comments or questions, I apologize. I will come back and respond to them. So if you do have any questions or concerns, feel free to pop them in there and I will come back and answer them later on. Okay, so I'm gonna add some twinkly stars, some dots, whatever you wanna call them. And when I do that, I use the back of the brush. Here's a really good tip and trick for you, Abigail. We use the brush handle. So I'm gonna go in the yellow with my brush handle and I'm going to make clusters of dots, random, and I have to tell you guys, random used to be very hard for me. I'm going to wipe it off, and now I'm going to go into my white, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make some clusters of white dots. I guess they look like stars. They just add a little something, something to your art. And we do this with the back of the brush. I usually get three dots out of every dunk, I guess you could say, into the paint. And again, we wanna be random. I like working in threes. And there we go. The beauty of this, and if you're not painting with me and you plan on painting, oh, I've dropped a necklace. You plan on painting afterwards. This recording will stay right in here. This Facebook Live will stay in here and you could come back and paint it at your leisure. So um, don't fret if you think I'm going too fast because you could come back and you can watch it and you can hit pause and play and pause and play as much as you need to. So I got up my big brush and I'm getting a little bit of yellow on it. I don't want to be shy. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow highlight to my moon. I don't want it to be too much. Just a little bit of a glare in there. Okay. And now I'm going to get my, I have a little tiny brush here. I'm going to get my little brush and I'm going to start filling in my cat. Now when I paint, I paint the way I color. So I will usually go in and outline everything first. By outlining my design, it kind of helps guide my brush and where my paint strokes need to be. So I like it. So now I have my whole cat outlined and then I'll just come in here and fill it in. And if I want the strokes to all go the same way on the cat, on his hind quarters, I'll just come in here and I'll make my strokes go that way once I have it all um, filled in. Isn't it cute, you guys? And now we just have to do his little tail. Oh, his tail got a little fat. But I'm just gonna show you how we can fix that later. Okay? Okay. Well, now I'm keeping, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna come in here with my black and I'm just going to outline my buildings now. Even though we have the shadow, that's perfect. But now we want a little bit more of a defined line here for them. Okay. I'm just coming in here and I'm adding in these lines. So you definitely see where one building ends and one building begins. Mm -hmm. 
and there we go I'm gonna add a little bit of um, lines to my pumpkins and again I'm just using my liner brush but I'm following the shape of the pumpkin okay you can add a little bit of outline to your leaves if you want kind of makes them pop a little more but that is totally up to you if you see mine and you're like oh, I don't think I want to do my leaves that's totally fine you don't have to do your leaves I'm doing it for you and then you can see if it's something that you want to do or not I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to highlight each of my stems and I'm also going to take a little white and highlight some of my pumpkin. Okay, you don't really want to overdo it. But adding a little white highlight really helps your pumpkins pop. Okay. Then in the white, I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I want to look at him now. I'm going to start adding a little bit of white highlight to my cat. And this is why I said I didn't mind that my tail got a little fat because once you add the highlights to it, it kind of skinnies it up a little bit. If I was so inclined, I would fix my tail, but I'm not going to. So. I outlined the whole cat, I outlined the cat hat, and then I just put a little two swishes in there just to give the hat a little dimension. And I think that is it, you guys. Let me see. Did I miss anyone's comments? I don't know. So, let me turn you guys around. And here we have it, 13 days of Halloween, Cat in the City. This is the one I did um, last year. A little different, but the same. Oh, I missed a whole building on here with the black. I have to fix that, okay. Um, had a little bit more darker windows in this one than I have in this one. Totally fine, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you only wanted to do this part of the painting, that's okay too. You have the tracer and the supply list in this video. You can totally just do this part with the cat and the moon. You know what? It's art. Art can't be wrong, you guys. Do what you feel. Okay? Well, I have my brush out. And if we see if we have any questions here, um, I'm going to paint my edges. I can't see. I'm not on my... Let's go here. I can't see if I have any more comments. There's a problem. Here we go. Hey there, yay, 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 cute, shared. Thank you, Pam. Woohoo! Pam's gonna paint later. Pam, Pam and Abigail, you can share your paintings with us. If you want, share them in the group. The group is um, private. Only the people in the group are the ones who paint, and we would love to see your paintings. So if you don't feel strongly enough or confident enough which you really should because it's art it can't be wrong but if you have a little bit of concern share them in the group Teresa's spot for step-by-step -step acrylic art and you don't have to show them here in the main Facebook page okay so I'm just going in I like to paint the edges of my canvases sometimes I like to paint something really fun on the edges of my canvases sometimes when it's a painting like this I just like to match it up with what's on the front. But you know what, you do you, it's fine. I could go back and add dots around the sides if I wanted to, we'll see, I don't know. So anyway, yes, so this recording will stay in here. I will also post it into the group, so if you have it, I keep my units in the group. There's probably, whoa, there's probably 20 complete painting tutorials in the group right now. 
tracers, supply lists, and videos. So if you're looking for something to do or paint, they're basically seasonal because, you know, gotta give the people what they want, right? I don't want to put out more balloons, so I'm just going to stretch it here. There we go. And I'll show you, I could go back. Got my little brush here. I could go back with my white and start adding in little groups, groupings of the dots on the side of my paint, I mean the side of my canvas. And that is totally up to you if that's something you want to do or not. And I'll show you guys how it looks. So there's one side with the dots and then there's the other side plain. So it's totally up to you if you want to do plain or dotted. So there you go, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you have the tracer and print two and cut one out. So if you don't, if you're too impatient to wait for your paint to dry or you don't have a hair dryer or a heat gun handy, just cut this part out. It's not that complicated. I did, he is missing a part of his tail. That's okay. Um, and just trace it onto the blue at the end after your blue is dry. Okay. Thank you guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow for 13 days of Halloween, we have Christy E. Creations, and she's going to be on here with jewelry. So um, I love you guys. I should go wash my hands. Have a great night, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon.